In this video, I'll show you how to control the position and velocity of a DC motor using ROS control. This video will help you in understanding how to use ROS control package. This is the DC motor with incremental encoder. These two wires are the input terminals of the motor. And this is the encoder circuit. To change the speed of the motor shaft, we have to vary the supply voltage at these terminals. For any control system, we need a feedback. For this motor, position feedback is provided by this incremental encoder. Now let's get to the work. Here is the setup. This is the motor shaft that I'm going to control. The input terminals are connected to the motor driver and the encoder terminals to Arduino. I have created a package named ROS control example. To control the position of this motor, I'll launch check position controller.launch file from this package. This is our DC motor in Arvis. Now let's launch ROS serial node to start communicating with Arduino. Done. Now I'm ready to command the design angles to the motor controller. The unit of angle in ROS is radians. I'll start with commanding an angle of 45 degrees that is 0.78 radians to execute. That is 45 degrees. Next I'll try 90 degrees. Perfect. Let's go back to zero. Now let's try 180 degrees. Nice. We can see the current position of the motor here. Next I'll command 270 degrees. Oh, the overshoot is more this time. We can mitigate this overshoot by tuning the PID values. Back to home position again. Now let me show you the behavior of this controller graphically. Okay, we are set. Let me command some random value. Oh, that was too small. Let's try some big value. Okay. The blue line is the error between the current position and the desired position. The red line is the current position and the CN colored line is the desired position. You see, the error has increased at this instant and decreased as the current position is following the desired position. This controller is doing a decent job with a little overshoot and a small steady state error. 
we can tune the PIDs further to get rid of them. RQT reconfigure allows us to change the values of the PID while the controller is running. So let's run RQT reconfigure. In any PID controller, the P term is tuned to decrease the rise time, the I term is tuned to get rid of steady state error and the D term for decreasing the overshoot and reduce the settling time. These are the values of P, I and D for this position controller. Let me increase the value of I to 10 and see what happens. You see, the command value is increasing over time to get rid of steady state error. Let me make the P value greater. Say 5000. This made the system unstable. Let me set it back to 1300. Or wait, let it be 5000 and let me try if changing D value will have any effect. I'll increase the value of D200. But there is no effect even after increasing the D term. Let me put back the previous values. They were doing a pretty decent job. So we saw controlling the angular position of the motor. Now let's control the velocity of the motor. To do that, launch checkvelocitycontroller.launch file and start serial node. The maximum velocity of this motor is 1.04 radians per second, that is equal to 60 degrees per second. Let me start with the minimum velocity 0.2 radians per second. You see it started maintaining the velocity near to 0.2 radians per second. Let's double the speed. Now it is running near to 0.4 radians per second. Let's test the speed of the motor with a stopwatch to check if the motor is really maintaining the speed. I'll command a velocity of 1 radian per second which is approximately 60 degrees per second. With this speed, the motor shaft should complete one revolution in 6 seconds. Let's do it. Perfect. 
let's half the speed to 30 degrees per second. Now it should take 12 seconds to complete one revolution. Ok, now let's stop this and check the behavior of velocity controller graphically. I have to add the controller first. I don't want all these. Done. Let me adjust X and Y axis. Okay. Now let me command different velocities and check. Let's give negative velocity. The values of the PID must be tuned such that the error line is always near to zero. Now let's open RQT reconfigure and check the values of PID. These are the values of PID. Till now, we have seen controlling the position and velocity of the DC motor checking the behavior of controllers graphically 
and changing PID while controller is running. Now it's time to have a quick look on the coding part. To control the joint actuators using ROS control, we have to write a hardware interface node. This is the hardware interface node of our DC motor. Let's check the init function first. This is the name of the joint. Register joint state handle to get the current status of the actuators from joint sensors. We can have position interface, velocity interface or an effort interface for a joint actuator. Since our motor is accepting voltage as input, not the position or velocity directly, it is a effort joint. So I have registered a joint effort handle. Provide the joint limits with joint limits handle. If you have more than one joint, then repeat these steps for each joint. And finally register all joints interfaces. This update method loops at a specified frequency. I've set the frequency to 5 Hz. This method will call read function to get the values from joint sensors. Update them to controller manager to compute the error and calculate new commands. And finally write function will send output commands from controllers to actuators. Now let's check what is in read and write methods. In read method, we are getting the current position and velocity of our motor from Arduino. If you have more than one joint, then get them all. In the write method, we are publishing the new effort command to the motor through Arduino. We are done with hardware interface node. Next we have to define the type of controller we are going to use and joint limits of the motor in YAML format. This is the namespace of the controller. Name of the joint to which this controller belongs to. Name of the controller and this is the type of controller. I am using effort controller joint position controller to control the joint position of the motor and effort controller joint velocity controller to control the velocity of the motor. I have set the PID values to these values after tuning them manually using RQT reconfigure. We have already seen how to tune the PID using RQT reconfigure. Finally, we have to write the launch files. Here we are loading control.yaml and jointlimits.yaml files. Start hardware interface node. and controller manager to load and start the controllers. This is the list of controllers that we are going to use. Note that we cannot run two controllers on the same joint at the same time. This will give resource conflict. We have to stop the running one and start the new one. That's why I have returned two separate launch files, one for position control and the other for velocity control. For more detailed information on ROS control, go through my website www.rosroboticslearning.com. ROS control. Links to this page and the source code of this project are attached in the description. Thanks for watching. Hope you like this video. Then don't forget to hit the like button and get subscribed to my channel for more videos on robotics.